we call upon, uh, we're going to ask, we have a presidential debate, and I'm going to hand the mic over to the moderator, obviously, and uh, this is all in comic fun and Purim spirit, and no one should take any of this too seriously. In fact, even though we only have three of the candidates on the stage, we did invite all the candidates. In fact, I invited every one of the 613 candidates on the Republican ticket originally. Um, but these are the only ones who decided to join us tonight. And with this, I will hand over the mic to tonight's moderator. If everyone can please uh, give him your fullest attention. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's debate. The Talmud tells us a story that at Ahasuerus' party, there was an argument that broke out as to which kingdom has the most beautiful woman. And to pr prove the supremacy of, of Ahasuerus' kingdom, he had Vashti come out unclothed. Well, tonight, we're going to prove which presidential candidate is truly the supreme candidate. Although the rabbis have ruled that the candidates can leave their clothes on. So without further ado, allow me to introduce tonight's candidate, businessman Donald Trump. Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Now you guys know the rules, same as last event. So let us begin with a simple question. Will each of you tell us why you feel you are the one who is best suited to be the next president of the United States of America? Let's start with you, Mr. Sanders. This is huge. I want to thank you all for coming here. I think it's obvious. The reason you have to vote for me is because I'm the only candidate with a Fidir Shakov. I'm the only Jew. In fact, I made a decision tonight that I would come out of the closet. Not only am I a Jew, but I... Yes, I didn't leave it in the closet. I'm a Lubavitcher. So who are you going to root for? The billionaire Goy? <laughs> the blonde shiksa? For your fellow Jew, the Lubavitcher. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Sanders. On to you, Mr. Trump. I have three words. Make Judaism great again. <laughs> Oh, oh well, I'll negotiate. Here's why you gotta vote for me. You see, there's one thing that I've got that not one of the other candidate has. Not the Republican Party, not the Democratic Party, but many of you here at the Purim Party have it. I'm talking about chutzpah. If I was a child and I had this kind of chutzpah, you would punch me on my chuckles because I am an adult and I have this kind of chutzpah, I think you should elect me as your next president. Thank you, Mr. President. The reason I should be president is simple. The Purim story says it all. Whenever the Jews face, face trouble, they need a woman to save them. And today, just like the Purim story, the people of Iran threaten to destroy Israel. I will be your queen, Vashti! Oh, I'm sorry, I mean Esther! <laughs> Thank you all. As many of you know, tonight we are celebrating Purim the holiday in which we commemorate the salvation of the Jews after facing certain death at the hands of the Persians. It is customary to exchange shalom among the with each other on this day. 
What is your stance on the current state of Charlotte Mudd's affairs, and how will you address this should you be elected to the White House? Well, we have a problem in our religion, and that problem is that 99% of the best Shalom Bonus is going to the richest 1% of the population, the rabbi and the billionaires. We are increasingly leaving behind our middle class with those cheap mass-produced hamantash. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Trump? I just want to make Judaism great again. It's going to be huge. We need to start winning at Shalaf Manas. For too long, the Christians and the Muslims have been winning at Shalaf Manas. They've been winning. They've been winning and we've been losing. When I am president, the Goyim are going to buy us Shalomachas, Amanas, and I'm going to make them pay for it because I'm a negotiator. That's how I'm going to make them do it. I'm going to make Judaism great again. You know this guy Sanders, he's all talk, but he doesn't have a plan. Wait, I'll show you my plan. Wait. Lots of rye bread. This pan. And some ketchup. And one for you. It's not a great one, but it's all right. Okay. <laughs> not done. <coughs> See, in Denmark, every citizen is guaranteed federally funded single payer Sholaf Manus. It's a right, not just the rabbis and the billionaires. Thank you both. One of the topics which people are concerned about these days is gender discrimination. As you know, in the Jewish community, many synagogues have separate seating for men and women. In order to ensure separate seating, they use partitions called mechitzes. How do you feel about mechitzes? And if you were president, what would your policy be regarding? Let's start with you, Hillary. Well, as you know, I am planning to be the first woman president. I like to think that I will be America's first Yiddishamama. <laughs> Nevertheless, I am a strong proponent of the Mekhiza. I respect it. Many people don't know this, but I am actually Shomer Nagiya, as is my husband Bill. Both of us only touch women. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Trump? Here's the deal. I went to an Ivy League school. I understand things, and I understand the pizza. You see, I love women, and women absolutely love me. They love me. They really do. So I get it. I'm all for it. And that's why I say, build the mechitza, and it's going to be a strong mechitza. In fact, that's the first thing I'm going to do. That wall, build that wall, and nobody, I mean nobody's going to get through my mechitza. Thank you both. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. You know why some synagogues don't have mechitzas? It's because they can't afford one. They're too busy paying off yeshiva loans. I'm already in contact with our current president about introducing a new program for free mechitzas. You remember Obamacare? We're going to call this one Obama Hisa, the, the, the Obama Pizza program. I think I need a mechitza between me and this guy, Bernie. <laughs> Thank you. The question is only for, this question is only for Mr. Mr. Trump and Mrs. Clinton. As you all know, as of a few weeks ago, there was a vacancy in the Supreme Court. It turns out that right around the same time, an opening was created in the Jewish Supreme Court, one of the major base deans in New York. If you were elected president, which rabbi would you choose to fill that position? Mr. Trump, let's start with you. That's easy. I would choose me. Look. There are a lot of options out there to fill that spot. 
But let's be honest, they're all lightweight. When two people come to a basement to settle a dispute, they don't need a rabbi, they need a deal maker. And I make deals the best deals. Well, my initial reaction was obviously to elect Rabbi Silverberg to the rabbinical Supreme Court. <laughs> but let's be honest, who's really the reason for all of the success at Beis Chabad? It's the Revitsons. <laughs> Thank you both. Mrs. Clinton, in the Purim story, Ahasuerus has his first queen, Vashti, killed. Some scholars suggested that the reason for this is that Ahasuerus found out that Vashti had shared classified emails with Amun. Do you feel that perhaps th the punishment was a bit extreme? If you were Ahasuerus, how would you have dealt with Vashti? Well, I think I would be lenient with her. After all, it's quite possible that at the time she shared it with Hama, the emails weren't classified at all. <laughs> Plus, Ahasuerus is the guy who wanted Vashti to appear in front of everyone without clothing. Obviously, he wasn't too concerned about privacy. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Trump? Usually, I'm against violence. I think violence is a terrible thing. I really do. However, in this case, I think I would agree with Akash Barrows. Pay that Vashti. Thank you both. Mr. Sanders, you mentioned earlier your Jewish roots. What would you say is your favorite Jewish tradition? The part of Judaism I like the most is the Kiddush and Shul. First of all, they give out the food for free. <laughs> Secondly, who wouldn't enjoy a little schnapps? And thirdly, in my shul, after eating the shola, people start feeling the burn. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Sanders. It is now time for your final statement. Mr. Trump, let's start with you, and then move on to Mr. Sanders, and finally, Mrs. Clinton will close it out. Mr. Trump. I'm a humble person. But what can I do if I've been so successful? I'd rather not talk about myself. But what can I do if there are so many incredible things about me to say? Just look at the Trump brand name. Recently we opened up a line of Trump stuff and they're selling like hotcakes. We have the uh, Trump to fill the fish. We have the Trump why? We have the Trump bottle, Bible where we substituted my name for Moses. <laughs> and last but not least, we have the Trump circumcision kit. Do it yourself. I will make Judaism great again. That guy is a Shanda. I'm the guy who will lead you to the promised land. It is an old, known fact that rabbis talk with their hands. It's about time we have a president who talks with his hands. Besides using good old Jewish logic, why should you vote for me? Well, why not? Thank you, Mrs. Clinton. I want you to think of me as a Jewish mother. Better yet. Think of me as a Jewish mother-in-law. And we all know how difficult your mother-in-law can be when she's upset. She can make your life absolutely miserable. If I don't get elected, I will be very, very upset. Bill won't be happy, Chelsea won't be happy, and you won't be happy. To avoid that, you need to vote for me. Excuse me, sir. This is a presidential debate. Who are you? Well, my Vladimir Putin. Who else? Over in uh, 
uh, you know, uh, the new southwest Russia, I think you call it the UP. Uh, you're a husband. And I hear there's a debate. It's true. That is true. So I want to do I want your voice. Like, these guys are nice guys, but you know, I'm doing alright. My friend uh, Kim Jong un will do better than this guy. Well, now that you're on the stage, why do you think you would be a better president than all the other candidates over here? Uh, well, let's say, uh, Russia, doing great there. Huge. Huge. And um, Ukraine is wonderful now. <laughs> USA, no problem. On top of it, you Jews are going to love me. Because every day, every day can be Purim, and we will start now with the Lechan. <laughs> Well, that's it for tonight. I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I hope this made your decision more clear. Lachai.